guys, it's Allie, and in today's video, I'm going to be comparing my opinions on certain dolls as a hardcore collector of American Girl to those of a casual fan of American Girl, and that is Darling Dolls. Darling Dolls is a YouTuber about all different types of doll lines, so some American Girl content, some MGA content, other doll lines, and things like that, and I've been subscribed to them for a few years, and I'm a big fan of their content, so I'm excited to share a new channel with you guys. They have three American Girl dolls, so they are slowly starting to get absorbed into the American Girl community and will probably eventually end up with a lot of American Girl dolls. I probably will. So do you want to share a bit about your channel for those who may not know who you are? Sure. So I am Darling Dolls on YouTube. I do general doll content, but also sometimes delve into like, I guess what you would call like quote unquote girly animated stuff like uh, Totally Spies, Wings Club. That's really nostalgic stuff for me that I'm a big fan of as well as fashion dolls as well. I'm a big collector of them. A lot of my more consistent things are like talking about new releases, but also stuff about the community, the companies behind them, video essays, just stuff that I want to talk about for hours. I don't have anyone else to turn to so I just turned to YouTube. So definitely after you guys finish watching this video check out the video we did on Darling Dolls' channel and make sure to subscribe to them. So without further ado let's get into some doll opinions. <laughs> so the first doll that I think we should react to is the newest American Girl doll and that is Claudie Wells. I keep wanting to say Claudie Jones because that was her original leaked name but they changed it to Claudie Wells. I'm pretty sure you've heard about Claudie's release. Yes uh, <laughs> I'm really excited for her. If you guys want to see my full in-depth thoughts on Claudia. I made a video recently talking about that, but just to summarize, I think Claudia is a really cute doll and I'm really glad to see another doll of color in American Girl's catalog of dolls, especially the historical line. There's some items in her collection I'm not a big fan of, like her gold outfit that everyone thought was leopard print at first, but it's actually not. I love the flapper outfit and I think her wig is really cute, but as for her face mold, I'm curious to see side by side of McKenna and Claudia since they both have like the round face molds in my opinion but I think I like her face mold better than Makina's but I'm still not sure if it's a doll I see myself purchasing because her face mold looks really young and I know a lot of people in the community dislike the painted lashes I actually don't mind them but that's probably because I keep my doll standing up they rarely close their eyes and that's really when the lashes look weird but those are just my general opinions on Claudie what are yours? So I'm pretty excited for Claudia. Uh, the historical lineup is the part of American Girl that I think I'm pretty familiar with. That's kind of how I got into it. I made this big ranking video over ranking all the historical American girls. It was a kind of a proponent to my channel kind of blowing up. I thought like maybe four people would be interested in that, but apparently several hundred thousand were. So after that being successful, that obviously got me into just wanting to explore American Girl more, not only for my channel, but for my own benefit, because I really enjoyed making that video. So I've been kind of following the historical releases for a while now and that of course includes Claudie and I feel like 1920s is just like really really overdue for the historical lineup as well as the doll of color so I am excited for that aspect but her collection overall it kind of did what I was afraid of and it just made it really really like costumey like kind of just very surface level of what people think of when they think 1920s so I was hoping it would do what American Girl does best with the historical lineup and just like really delving into like aspects people don't think of when they think of that time period especially when it comes to like little girls who are often very forgotten in history. So I don't know, maybe her story will kind of pick up where the collection kind of leaves off for me, but I haven't read it yet. So I don't know for sure. I think I agree because I feel like a lot of Claudie's collection is like those Harlem Fashion Row collaborations, which are super cool, but they're meant to be like modern takes on 1920s outfits. Mm -hmm. So Claudie really doesn't have that many like historically accurate outfits in her collection. So hopefully she'll be around for a while and we'll get new outfits and won't get forgotten like dolls like Josefina do. Yeah. Like with Courtney, they released, like when she was released, she had a, a ton of like mix and match outfits from her era. And I know people think hers is kind of stereotypical, but I mean, with the 80s, it's easy to have fun with it. I would have really liked to see them do something like that with the 20s as well, because I mean, there's not as many like fashion items from the 20s that you can mix and match like you can from the 80s. But I think they definitely could have done like 
something to that. Another thing about Claudia that has been talked about a lot on social media is her lack of promotion compared to when Courtney came out. So when Courtney came out, she was given to like a bunch of influencers. They were teasing her for quite a while with like an outline. And she even got those cringy American Girl music videos that I absolutely hate. <laughs> um, but with Claudia, all we really got was like, oh, we're having a new doll and you can meet the author. And I believe they did like feature her on like Good Morning America or something like that. But yeah, the lack of promotion is something that a lot of people in the community are really upset about, especially since it is a doll of color. Like I said, like a 1920s doll, I imagine people have been waiting on for years and years now. So it doesn't make sense to me why they wouldn't be like promoting the heck out of her. So the next doll we are going to talk about is one that I actually really love, but a lot of people in the community strongly dislike, and that is Mary Ellen Larkin. So another historical girl. She's Juniper in my collection, so she's kind of like the face of my channel, but I really love her. I don't know her story too, too well. I think I read half of it and then gave up. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I know that a lot of people dislike her character because she's like quite immature, but in terms of her collection, it's very bright and colorful, which I really like. I love her prom dress, but I think the doll itself is really pretty. Just a reminder, she came out before Courtney, so she started the whole red strawberry blonde hair with side bangs thing. And I don't care that she's a classic mold because I think it makes her look really cute and good with her wig. And I just think she needs to be loved more and not as hated as she is. I ranked Mary Ellen in my ranking video I did a while back. I'm pretty sure I put her in this second to last <laughs> tier. Um, and for me, it was mostly her story because I do really like her doll. I think she's really pretty. I'm not deep enough into AG yet where I can like, just like identify a mold on site. I do think her face and her outfits and her hairstyle, everything her meat outfit is super, super cute. I really love her style. Aesthetic, her play sets. She probably has some of the best ones like in the entire historical lineup. But her story for me was a little disappointing because it was like taking aspects from past historical girls and just kind of blending them together. So it was a lot of stuff that I had already read before and I had read a lot of historical books leading up to her like in the weeks to begin with. So I was kind of bored with it. Like she had this big family. She felt kind of like disappeared in, which was something we covered before. She wanted to be like on TV. That was something we covered before. One thing that was really disappointing for me was that in her story as a baby, she had polio and she was actually a little bit physically disabled for that. But that wasn't really touched upon in her story, nor was it reflected in her doll at all, which I think was just a big missed opportunity. We definitely need more dolls with disabilities. Joss was a step in the right direction, even Gabriella with her stutter, but I would love to see a doll that has like maybe a wheelchair or some other disability, maybe one that like has slight vision impairment. So we haven't really gotten a doll with glasses since Molly. So the next doll is another very controversial one in the community. She gets a lot of hate and that is Tenny Grant. And I think I will group in Logan with this because they're kind of a duo and with Logan being the first boy doll, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on that. So with Tenny, I think I hate her a bit less than the rest of the community does. I know a lot of people strongly dislike her hands, but they don't really bother me, but I also don't have Tenny, so maybe if I had her in my collection, her hands would bother me more. I think her wig is really pretty. I like her freckles a lot, but I'm not a fan of the lip paint plus the decal eyes. Like they just look kind of like reddish. Like they have a reddish hue to them, which I'm not a big fan of, but I really do love Tenny's collection and I really regret not buying more items from it back when it was available. Her like barbecue chicken set is something I really wanted. I love doll food and the pieces are really cute. And she also had that outfit with like the blue top and the lace shorts, which was really popular. I regret not getting that one. The mix and match line she had right before she got retired, I didn't really care for much, but a bunch of her original release items, I regret not buying. But I do think that they should have made Tenny the Girl of the Year and done a better job creating Gabriella and released her in 2018 instead of rushing her and giving her a lackluster release. And as for Logan, I think it's cool that we have boy dolls. I know a lot of people don't like Logan. A lot of people were unhappy that he had the Kaya mold because that was meant to be specific for Kaya because people in her culture don't really show their teeth. So when they used that mold for Logan, people were upset. Like, why can't the boy doll show teeth? We've been doing that with our own customs for years. His items are really nice though. And I do wish they would give the boy dolls more love, especially in the Truly Me line, because I feel like they get forgotten about by American Girl a lot. I'm not very familiar with Tinny. I have seen that the fandom like really, really dislikes her. And I was never entirely sure why, because she does look very cute. She is kind of the standard like 
blonde American girl that I have seen many, many times before. She does give me a bit of like Taylor Swift vibes. I bet that's probably not a very unpopular observation. Other than that, like, I can't say she like speaks to me particularly. Is she like a country singer? She's like pretty much young Taylor Swift. She's from like Nashville and she writes songs with her songwriting partner bandmate Logan. Do they date in the future? I don't know. A lot of people say she's like Taylor Swift wannabe. <laughs> right, yeah, I, I can see that. And I think as far as American Girl hobbies go, music and songwriting is I think a very popular one next to like dancing and acting. So I think people were probably maybe expecting something a little different in that area. But her collection is very cute. Like it's very old school Taylor Swift in like a, a good way. Like she's very fashionable. I do like her collection. As for Logan, I'm not very familiar with any male American girl dolls. So if you hadn't told me that he had the Kaya mold, I never would have liked known that i guess because american girl molds are already kind of gender neutral which i never really thought about i find it really interesting that when they released the boy dolls the first one being logan they did the closed mouth with no teeth and then once they released the ones into the truly me line they would modify existing molds for example i own 76 who is a modified sonali mold to not show their teeth so i guess that's how they want to distinguish them from the girls but within the community we have been making custom boy dolls for years just by taking old dolls and putting a Monique baby wig on it those are like the it wig for a boy doll <laughs> every single youtuber in like 2015 had those wigs i'm confused why american girl decided no boy doll should not show the teeth i guess i'm used to it at this point but it's something that i would love to ask somebody at american girl why they made that design choice yeah it, it is a weird design choice and for logan specifically i can kind of understand if he was the first boy doll why they would reuse a mold because Making new face molds is like really expensive as far as doll production goes. And if they didn't think a boy doll would be very successful, they probably just didn't want to invest a lot of money into that. But I do think there probably are other molds they could have used other than Kaya's. I can definitely see people's concerns with that. So the next one is a series of dolls and you might have to look this up because I don't know how familiar you are with like the numbers of the Truly Me system. That's like the whole, are you a casual fan? Or are you a collector? Like who's number 59? Like things like that. There's this series of Truly Me dolls that American Girl released called the Street Chic dolls. And this is the confusing part. They're part of the Truly Me line. Like they have numbers, but their outfits that they come in are not the same as the regular Truly Me dolls, like they're all different. And they also have bright colored hair and I'm not a big fan of these dolls. With the whole Truly Me line, it's supposed to be like your lookalike doll. That's how it was advertised and that's what made me want an American Girl doll because I wanted a mini me. And I don't really see that many kids in American Girl's target audience with bright purple hair, bright blue hair. So I guess it's like fun to have dolls with colored hair, but I wish they saved that just for the CYO line. Cause I feel like in the Truly Me line, these dolls just don't belong there. So colored hair dolls was bad enough but then they released more colored hair dolls who don't even have the same meat outfit and labeled them street chic dolls but they're still truly me line so i'm like why can't we just make that a separate line like why is it in the truly me line so i feel like colored hair dolls fine but don't mesh that with truly me please so those are my thoughts on them i see them I actually remember them a little bit from whenever I was doing some research on the historical girl video. I remember seeing them on the website and just thinking like, oh, what what's happening here? They're come off to me like when I was like eight or nine years old, like what my idea of like a, a super cool street style girl would be. But then they have, you know, these very childlike faces and bodies. So it's just, it's a little off putting, I guess. I, I don't think I like them much either. It's very like a Disney Channel's idea of like a cool cool rebel teenage girl is yeah. and like the colors of their hair are so shiny and bright it just looks so like fake and american girl i think uses like human grade Necolon, like what they usually use in like human wigs. So they probably could have found more naturally colored, like colored hair for that too. I think they kind of cheaped out. Like I get my hair dyed, I have highlights and I like natural colors. And even if you want to do something bright, I feel like there's some shades that would look cute. Or even if they like did something at the roots to make it look more realistic. Cause for a lot of the dolls, especially the ones that just have like solid color bright hair, it looks like a party city wig on a doll. I'm not opposed to all colored hair dolls. Rainbow High has been growing on me because a bunch of my close friends are telling me to get rainbow high dolls when you have a whole monochromatic 
theme as your aesthetic, I think colored hair works well. But in a line that's supposed to be like natural, colored hair is not my favorite thing. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> We're moving on to the girl of the years now. And the first one is one that I'm pretty sure you have strong opinions on because you own this doll. And that is girl of the year for 2022, Corinne Tan. We both own Corinne actually. So I am not a giant fan of her colored hair. We discussed that earlier. The reason I still own Corinne is because unlike most of the other colored hair dolls, the blue hair is really only on the bottom and under layers of her hair. So it's pretty easy to hide her hair. And at least from the shoulders up, her hair mostly looks all black, which I really like. I think her face mold is actually really cute. And it wasn't as much of a shock to me compared to some other molds. Like I got used to this one very quick. Her eyes being bigger, I know some people aren't a fan of that, but I've learned to actually love the eyes because when I take photos of Corinne, especially outside, with the eyes being much bigger, it reflects a lot more light and it looks way better in photos and things like that. The painted lashes don't really bother me that much, as I said earlier. I like her collection. I own her pajamas. I feel very attached to my Corinne doll because I took her on a trip to the Rockies with me, not the ones in Colorado, but I feel like bringing Corinne to the Rockies just made me love her even more and love her story even more. So I really like her. However, there are leaks actually for an upcoming Truly Me doll that seems to look very similar to Corinne, except her hair is all black and doesn't have the blue. And I know a lot of people are saying, oh, if this doll was out, I probably would have gone her instead of Corinne because I hate the blue hair. That doll's not out yet. So for now we're stuck with Corinne, but those are just my thoughts. I also have a video for anyone watching with my in-depth thoughts about Corinne. So check that out if you want to hear my full reaction to everything in her collection. So what are your thoughts on your first, I believe, American Girl doll? So I really, really love Corinne. She was my first girl of the year. And like the first like release that like I was like anticipating building up to, I got to buy her like on release day, which was like a really cool experience. I don't mind her colored hair so much because it is like that very shiny, bright, artificial kind of looking hair, but her hair being so dark, the other part of it kind of helps break it up. And also it is easy to hide if you don't like it too much. I like it. I have her in her, uh, well, it's not her outfit, but the Chinese New Year outfit they released with all the holiday collection. And it just looks so cool, that bright red next to her bright blue hair. I'm really into that style. I haven't read her story yet. I'm like a bit behind on that, admittedly, but I do like what I've heard of it. I watched a little video they had on their channel, like the stop motion. Yeah. I thought that was really cute. I watched that when too. It's, it's the stop motion videos are really cute. The animated ones give me nightmares. Exactly. <laughs> but otherwise, I really love her collection. I love winter clothes so much. And I love like her color scheme she has and everything with the purples, the pinks, the blues. It's just like so coherent, cohesive. It's so cool. Her little sweater is like I just adore Corinne, like everything about her I love. I think she's one of the best Girl of the Year's American Girl has done in a while, and it's great to have a Doll of Color Girl of the Year with a fully thought out collection compared to like Gabrielle. <laughs> Next for Girl of the Year's is another more controversial doll, and that is Isabel Palmer, Girl of the Year from 2014. She is a very nostalgic doll to me because the first time I went to an American Girl store, Isabel was the Girl of the Year, so I got to see her pieces in person and pick up some of her mix and match items in person. Isabel as a doll, I really like her feature combination, I will fully acknowledge it's not that unique or anything groundbreaking in the scheme of like American Girl dolls. She has a classic mold, she has hazel eyes, blonde wig. She does have the pink highlights though and I like that they are not permanently attached to her hair and I wish that is what American Girl did with future color hair dolls. So you could choose to have pink in your doll's hair or take it out. Isabel is very nostalgic to me so that definitely affects my opinion and I have a bunch of pieces from her mix and match collection but I feel like personality wise Isabel is one of the dolls I relate to the most. And I think that's also why I like her compared to most people in the community. I'm a dancer, I did dance for like 10 years. So when people were like, oh, but we already had Marisol, excuse me, Marisol did jazz and tap and Isabel did ballet. They are very different. I read her books years ago, but the movie is more fresh in my mind. So I'm gonna talk about the movie. I'm sorry for those of you guys who don't agree with that. But the whole thing about comparing yourself to your sibling is something that I experience a lot. Even though I'm the older sibling, I hate dancing with my sister because I'm scared that she's gonna judge every dance move I do, every mistake I make. So I definitely relate to Isabel. And she also sews, which is something that I got into over the pandemic. So being a sewing dancer with a sister is something that I can just very much relate to. So I love Isabel. She's not the most unique doll. Yes, there's a lot of pink in her collection, but I just love it as a dancer. That's my thoughts on Isabel. <laughs> so I'm looking at her collection and I'm kind of falling in love with her. Like, yes, there is a lot of pink, but I 
I love pink, so that's good for me specifically. Yeah, she's not incredibly unique as far as her appearance goes or I guess even her clothes, they don't look like anything special to me, but I did ballet in college and it was one of my favorite things I did. I really got into it. Uh, it's probably the best shape I've ever been in my life. I like really want to get back into ballet if I can. Also, her dance outfit is really, really cute. And I love that she sews. I feel like sewing as a hobby for American Girl is this is probably the first time I've seen it. And like, I also sew. I majored in costume design in college. So that's really special to me. Her little sewing studio she has is so cute. I love it so much and her cat her cat is so cute she's cute like i have nothing bad to say about her honestly i like your opinion on isabel just because she gets so much hate in the community for like being boring and basic but i relate to her more than any other doll so i love her so the last doll that we are going to be talking about is one of the most popular american girl dolls a big fan favorite and that is kanani akina girl of the year for 2011. i own this doll i got her second hand and she's really cute on my shelf right now but I will fully admit I only got Kanani because there was a really good deal on her and you cannot pass up a cheap Kanani because she can retail for crazy amounts on eBay and things like that. So I think her long hair is really pretty. Mine has been hot water dunked, so her hair is straight, not curly. Her collection is really cute. I love her like chair that she has with the ottoman. I think it's bright and fun. I love her shaved ice stand. I used to play the shaved ice game on the American Girl website all the time. And I also just loved shaved ice. So I think she's a really cool doll. Doll. I like her collection. I don't fully know what her story is. I watched the Doll Places video comparing American Girl dolls to Barbies lately. So I know she has something to do with like showing this girl around the island and being a tour guide. <laughs> being a whole island girl is not that unique because we had Kaylee who did like surfing and island stuff in 2003 and Jess, she went to Belize. She had this whole palm tree hammock set. But Kanani as a doll is very unique. She is a medium skin Jess mold, which I believe she was the only one of until a few years ago when we got Truly Me number 79. Um, her wig is still very unique. I just don't like her as much as other people in the community in terms of like favorite American Girl dolls of all time, but clearly I like her enough to own her in my collection. So those are my thoughts on Kanani Akina. So I'm a little bit familiar with Kanani and for a weird reason. And it's because when I did my historical ranking video, I got a lot of comments of people saying like, you forgot Kanani. Where's Kanani in this ranking? And at first I was like, did I forget someone? So I looked into it and I was like, first off, this is not a historical girl. She is a girl a year. So what are you talking about? But otherwise, I do think she's really, really cute. I love how long her wig is. Her meat outfit, the dress is really, really cute. Her overall like aesthetic, again, like I guess is not incredibly unique, but her color scheme and her collection and everything I'm really into. And I think as far as her story goes, I'm not really familiar with it either, but I imagine it's probably something maybe becoming a little more topical over time. So I can imagine people like revisiting her because especially right now, like showing the lives of Native Hawaiians is something that's really important. So I don't think American Girl will necessarily revisit anytime soon, but I can imagine like maybe the community probably revisiting her story and everything. So that would be nice to see. So those are all of the dolls that we are going to be talking about today. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And just a reminder to check out the video we did on Darling Dolls' channel. That will be linked in the description as well as the channel itself. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel and comment down below your opinions on all of the dolls we talked about. Have an amazing day. Day and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye!